In this video, we want to derive a formula for the cross product of two vectors. So the cross product of two vectors is another vector that's perpendicular to both of your vectors. So if I want to find the cross product of vector A and vector B, and vector A and vector B are lying in some plane, and if we connect those two vectors at the tail, then the cross product of those vectors is going to be another vector that's perpendicular to both of those vectors. And there's a lot of information about you know which direction this is going to go and all the properties of cross products and everything. In this video, we're just going to focusing on focus on finding a formula to find the components of this cross product vector if we know the components of these two vectors here. So the key is that our cross product vector is perpendicular to our two vectors. All right, so let's let vector A have components A1, A2, A3, and vector B have components B1, B2, B3. So we want to find some vector C, C1, C2, C3, so that vector A is perpendicular to C and vector B is perpendicular to C. All right, and so this C vector is our cross product vector. It will end up being our cross product vector. Okay, that's a cross, not a variable x. All right, so what do we know about vectors that are perpendicular? Well, if the vectors are perpendicular, then we need their dot product to equal zero. So we need a dot c to be zero, and we need vector b dot with vector c to be zero. So hopefully you've done dot product before. So the dot product of a and c is a1 c1 plus a2 c2 plus a3 c3 equals 0 and b dot with c is going to give us b1 c1 plus b2 c2 plus b3 c3 equals 0. So we need both of these equations to be true because we need c to be perpendicular to both of our vectors. Alright, so here's the kind of tricky part that you would take a little bit of uh, trial and error to, to figure out what to do, but what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this first equation by b3, and we're going to multiply this second equation by negative a3, the opposite of a3. All right, let's see what we get here. So I'm just going to write these in order, a, b, c order, so I'm going to get a1, b3, c1, plus a2, b3, c2, plus a3, b3, c3 equals 0. All right, and over here I'm going to get negative a3, b1, c1, minus a3, b2, c2, minus a3, b3, c3 equal 0. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to add these two equations together. So I don't want to rewrite this whole thing, but you know, picture putting this under here. All right, put that equation under there, and then we're going to add these two equations together. So on the right-hand side, we're just going to get zero. But what you'll see when we add these two equations together is this guy and this guy are going to cancel out. So what we'll have left is a1, b3, c1, plus a2, b3, c2, minus a3, b1, c1, minus a3, b2, c2 equals 0. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the terms together that have a c1 and I'm going to factor out the c1. So with those two terms, I'll have c1 times a1 b3 minus a3 b1 plus, and then we're going to go to these two terms here, and we're going to factor out the c2. So that's going to give me C2 times A2B3 minus A3B2 equals 0.
zero. I said, there we go, zero. Now, let's think about when this would be true. How would I make this equation true? Well, if I could get this guy right here to come out to be equal to the opposite of C2. All right, if I could get that guy, whatever numbers I have for A1 and B3 and A3 and B1, if they would equal the same as the opposite of C2, and if I could get what's in these parentheses here to come out to be equal to C1, let's think, would that give me 0? If I could make that come out to be C1, all right, that would give me the equation C1 times negative C2 plus C2 times C1 equals 0. All right, so that would be true, right? No matter what C1 and C2 are, that's a true statement. So in order for this equation to be true, let's go like that. In order for that equation to be true, I need a1, b3, minus a3, b1 to be the opposite of c2. And I need a2, b3, minus a3, b2 to be c1. Wow, all right, well, we're almost there, right? We have found a formula for C1 and C2. We'll multiply both sides of this by negative one, but remember our goal was to find C1, C2, C3. And we want that in terms of A's and B's so that we can use these A's and B's to figure out what our um, cross product vector is using the numbers from A and B. So, so far we've got C1, is a2 b3 minus a3 b2 and c2 would be the opposite of this so I'll switch this order a3 b1 minus a1 b3 now all we have to do is figure out c3 so in order to figure out what our c3 value is in terms of my a's and b's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to one of these first original equations that we did right here this uh, a1 c1 plus a2 c2 this business here either this equation which was a result of the dot product or this equation right here which was a result of the dot product with b and c and I'm going to plug in C1, I'm going to plug in all this stuff, and C2, I'm going to plug in this stuff into either one of these equations, and we're going to see what happens, all right? So I think I'm going to go with this one, this original A dot C. All right, so here's my original A dot C formula. I need that to come out to be zero. Why? Because I want these to be perpendicular vectors. And in the previous uh, slide there, we figured out that the values of C1 and C2. So let's plug them in and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to do A1 times C1, which is A2B3 minus A3B2. See, after we do this, we're only going to have uh, one C3, and we can solve for C3. So A2 times C2, which is A3B1 minus A1B3. I'm going to run out of space here. Let me change that. All right, just move that out of the way a little bit. Plus A3C3 equals 0. OK, now we got to solve for C3. All right, let's do it. So let's do some distributing and see what happens. Maybe maybe a term will drop out. I like to just put these in orders of A's and B's, A1, A2, B3. I'm going to move this term to the other side because I'm going to be solving for C3 anyway. So I'll get that closer by itself on one side. Okay, do we have any luck here? Aha, here we go. This guy and this guy are going to make zero. 
Okay, so now we've got, let's write this in order. I'll switch these around so I can write this as a minus. Put this term first, minus a1, a3, b2. Actually, I'm going to end up dividing by a negative. So, okay, so then we're going to divide by the opposite of a3. I should have just left them in that order, right? Because now i got to switch them around again. That's okay. Doesn't matter. So if I divide this by a negative, this is going to be positive. These a3s are going to cancel. These a3s are going to cancel. Um, and I'll switch the order around because the positive and the negative. So I'm going to end up with a1, b2. This term divided by this term is positive, a1, b2. And then the first term divided by negative a3 is negative a2, b1. And that is... C3, we did it. So our cross product vector has components of C1, which is A2, B3, minus A3, B2. That's the first component. The second component is A3, B1, minus A1, B3. And the third component is a1, b2, minus a2, b1. So notice that um, in your first component, you're using the second and third components of a and b, your first component of c. In your second component of c, you're using first and third components of b. And in your third component of c, you're using first and second. So that's kind of one way to help remember what goes with what. And there's another way to do this with determinants, but um, I just wanted to show you the derivation of this formula.